Well, hello there and welcome to the candy wallpapered upstairs hallway of the dollhouse for another reading from The Secret Language of Birthdays. That's right, by Gary Goldschneider and Eust Elfers for July 30th, the day of tangible presence. And here we have us, an image or an illustration, if you like, of... A clutched pearl coming up out of a loafer. That's right. How do you like that? Well, an image is representational of tangible presence. I say that the past few have been actually pretty representational of the title of the day. This one being a, you know, pearl in your shoe. Maybe you're walking on it. I don't know about the clutched part, but hey, they had to have it popping out somehow. And also, if you think about uh, how a pearl is made, well, a grain of sand gets into an oyster's mouth and... Uh, it puts that uh, that lacquer around the outside of it. I can't remember the name of the stuff that goes around it. But tangible presence. Ooh, I like it. Hey, is today July 30th and it's your birthday? Well, if it is, I just want to wish you a happy birthday. And for everyone else who's just joining us randomly, well, I want to say welcome and I hope you enjoy yourself. All right, hey, before we dive in with the birthday read, let's roll some dice. That's right, this is the Diecast Birthday Cast, so let's live up to the namesake. And why else might be rolling some dice if you haven't seen a birthday reading before through here? Well, for synchronicity's sake, that's right. Ooh, and we, we rolled us a six and a three. Four and nine, that's right. A six in the crown and a three in the root for you new agey chakra folks. How does that apply to the chakra? I don't know. That's for more enlightened minds. Maybe one of these days I'll find out how to maybe append that or, or make that work for me. And then I can relay that information to you. But what's a synchronicity? Uh, well, going on a synchronicity walk or how do you make synchronicity work for you? Well, it's just going out in that world and letting the universe throw those numbers at you. You just got to be keen to the numbers. And this is intention for people born today or the strangers or the people dropping in randomly. Uh, you just go out and you keep a mind open and your eye on the prize for those numbers. And if you see a six, a three, or a nine, hey, you go after them. Maybe you just see that on a local uh, dispensary. And maybe you want one that partakes in the, uh, in the ganja there. But you go in and maybe they have... I don't know, some, some solve for some inky joints or something. And maybe the, uh, the brand or the, uh, the uh, what do you call it? The strain is the 369 strain. Hey, what do you know? It's the best new solve for your osteoporosis or whatever you got going on. I don't know. Whatever is tangibly present in your life. It can be that simple. Uh, in any event, it's just the universe's way of showing you you're on the right path. And uh, even if you stray from it, you just got to stop, take a moment, and let the numbers come to you. Let the, or whatever you deem the universe to show you how to find the path. All right, hey, let's dive in. Enough of my horrible example of synchronicity. All right, your month is July, your day is the 30th, and your sign is 6 to 8 degrees Leo of the Leo 1 period specifically. And your quality and element is fixed fire. All right. July 30th, the day of tangible presence. Those born on July 30 make their presence felt in a very physical fashion indeed. Not only are they individuals of substance, but they also have a sense of how material aspects of life operate. The solid, sturdy people born on this day dwell on the earthly plane, which is their dominion, and it may be hard to convince them that they should develop their spiritual side. Taken up with the here and now, with energy of doing things, they do not specialize in introspection or philosophical detachment. Most often, July 30 people express their thoughts and creativity in a very forceful and or sensuous manner. Yet, in their later years, they are often more open to the consideration of metaphysical questions. One reason for this is that the subject of death is an extremely difficult one for July 30 people to handle. On the other hand, they find it hard to believe in a total end to their existence, and on the other, equally difficult to find faith in an immortal soul. An interest in religion and philosophy will often surface in them after their second Saturn return, around age 56, opening up a whole new dimension in their lives, and until that time, they will continue on their extremely pragmatic, earthbound course. 
The subject of love may also be painful for those born on this day. Many July 30 people find it difficult to reconcile pure love with physical needs and desires and consequently seek unusual, odd, and out-of-the-way expressions for their feelings. Their difficulty in finding a satisfying Normal and straightforward love relationship may also awaken a powerful fantasy life, leading them to perilous situations. And some July 30 people, unfortunately, become resigned to the fact that true love is out of reach, an, impo an impossibility to achieve. Those that allow such an admission to color their general outlook with a cynical cast can become arrested in their personal development. Physical activities of all kinds interest July 30 people. Even more delicate, less robust men and women born on this day generally display a marked interest in sports, the human body, beauty pageants, and modeling, and all types of glorification of the human form. This interest can be highly aesthetic and artistic or merely common and vulgar. July 30 people find it extremely difficult to deal with irrational fears and phobias and can be bewildered by terrors which surface unexpectedly. They are often unequipped to cope with such anxieties unless they have previous mental or spiritual training to fall back on. <laughs> However, such irrational experiences can arouse their curiosity about what lies behind the objects of the apparent physical world around them. This can be just the impetus they need to develop an interest in spiritual matters. Challenge-oriented, they will want to overcome their fears and conquer their weaknesses, which can lead to real personal growth. Rather than feeling out of touch, which they hate more than anything, they may seek a deeper understanding of life. Well, all right, what did I have to say in the notes about the breakdown? I mentioned the clutched pearl in the shoe, how I found that to be an interesting representation. And uh, here's what I had to say about the breakdown. Okay, so one of them down-to-earth individuals, a stuck substance in the here and now who doesn't specialize in introspection or philosophical detachment. And I suppose that would mean the idea of a synchronicity dice roll with a focus on synchronicity isn't quite up your alley. Well, I did one anyway, right? Despite that, obviously, you know, what with the notes having come before the dice roll, all right? So I obviously gave this a nice little read through. But I'm rolling them anyway, right? So maybe I know something that you haven't quite heard yet. Who's to say? Let's see here. What else is that right? Uh, or maybe, a, maybe Saturn has returned a second time for you whatever that means and you're ready for some metaphysics instead of your down-to-earth physics then regardless where you are in your journey i say throw in with what you know okay whether it's earthbound realities or dreams up in the metaphysical clouds you just do you all right it sounds like everything's gonna work out eventually it might take till you're 56 years old with that second coming to saturn but it will happen all right uh, let's see what else we got here. Be mindful of the perilous situations you might get yourself into with love relationships, though I am interested in what an odd, out-of-the-way expression of that looks like, especially if it's coming from someone who's supposed to be otherwise earthbound. That said, I understand the cynical side of that world myself, and if you're suffering that, I say keep staying open, even if it seems an abject impossibility. I fight that feeling myself, but I'd hate for the mindset to negatively color an opportunity or possibility at that kind of happiness just because of another person's damage in my past. As to fears and phobias, I'm glad it makes mention that you're equipped with the necessary tools to challenge such issues and your ability to evolve, if you haven't already. All right. That's right. Hey. You may have fears of things, but you're going to figure out a way to uh, maybe not necessarily overcome them, but adapt to them. That's right. Okay, let's move on to your numbers and your planets. Okay, yes, sir and ma'am. Those born on the 30th of the month are ruled by the number 3, as 3 plus 0 equals 3, and by the planet Jupiter. 
since those ruled by the number three often seek to rise to high positions in their sphere july 30 people may well be driven toward financial and material success those ruled by the number three love their independence and tend to be decisive jupiter lends an optimistic and expansive social outlook to july 30 people strengthened by or stricken with rather a vitality and courage derived from the sun which is leo's ruler unfortunately those born on this day may be unduly optimistic about their future and ill-equipped to handle or even recognize failure all right that sounds all well and good but is it what's who's to say let's dive in with the notes here the sun and the expansive planet jupiter for an expansive courageous strength and vitality interesting that they outline a predisposition for the more directly recognizes success in life and by underlining the fact that optimism may lend to a myopia to recognize failure all right overconfidence is the term that comes to mind but i don't know that it's quite right necessarily but that's what i drilled down on uh, that can drive you in the wrong direction sometimes. Uh, all that's to say, maybe be mindful of such a dynamic existing, even if you don't quite understand why that's a negative. Uh, so you're able to identify any traps that you might not otherwise see in your excitement. Success is captivating by any measure, but we don't often recognize what comes with it. Anyway, that's what I had to say about your numbers and your planets let's dive in with your tarot well, the more eclectic of the metaphysical practices by my mind but hey they're fun and they're here in the book and interesting so let's read it shall we the third card in major arcana is the empress symbolizing creative intelligence she is the perfect woman the ultra feminine mother earth nurturer who is our dreams made real our hopes and aspirations embodied. This card carries the positive traits of charm, grace, and unconditional love, and the negative aspects of vanity and affectation, uh, as well as intolerance for imperfection. Okay, it didn't say much about what that card might do for you, so I'm going to have to interpret. So take this with a grain of so much sand, right? Yeah, let's see what we got here. An intolerance for imperfection. That's a question mark here. Dreams made real, hopes embodied. I don't know if that speaks to an earthbound nature, but positive traits of charm, grace, and unconditional love. They sound great. All right, and perhaps that's why an intolerance for imperfection is mentioned as being negative. It might miss. Uh, you might miss a great thing right in front of you because it doesn't seem good enough. All right, use that creative intelligence of yours to identify that. All right, you don't want to miss a good thing just because you don't think it meets the measure. So do yourself a little self-analysis. Know your self-nature and apply it to what comes at you, I'm supposing. All right, hey, let's move on to your health. Those born on July 30 usually show a preoccupation with their bodies. Either they flaunt them or are self-conscious and try their best to cover up. Some of the physically repressed people born on this day may manifest hypochondrical tendencies. I don't know if I read that right. Hypochondrical, yeah, hypochondrical tendencies. As parents, July 30 people may put undue emphasis on the physical aspects of life, neglecting emotional, intuitive, and mental qualities. In their interactions with their own age group, they may, oddly enough, suffer from repressed aggression. As if they are afraid that if they release negative feelings, they will lose control. Needless to say, regular exercise and varied forms of sensuous and sexual expression are important for July 30 people. Massage, shiatsu, yoga, music, sculpture, all tactile forms of expression are suggested as hobbies. Overeating may prove to be a problem for July 30 people. Craving for excess protein and sugar may be periodically indulged, and but have to be kept under control. All right, what did I have to say about your health? And this one was a little unique. I've seen um, certain things mentioned before, obviously, I haven't read quite a few of these, but they had some that I hadn't read before for you. 
protein indulgence. Uh, I'm not quite sure what that means. Maybe too much red meat. I was like, well, what's the negative with that besides some uh, some ripe gas? But, uh, you know, watch your protein intake, I guess. Uh, what was the other thing that was new, I think? Uh, what do we got here? Massage, shiatsu, yoga, music, and sculpture for your tactile hobbies. That's a new one. So maybe find you something you can do with your hands there, right? Okay, what did I write down in the notes? Mind your indulgence of protein. I said that one already. Let's see. Otherwise, there was a lot to unpack here, I thought. I was surprised I didn't mention a therapist, uh, to seek the help of a therapist if needed. That one is often mentioned. So uh, what with the uh, little idiosyncrasies they dived into here, especially as parents with an emphasis on neglecting emotional, intuitive, and mental qualities. I would say that's right up uh, going to a therapist's alley. Uh, what else we got here? I say use those tools. Uh, what's it? <laughs> what did I say? That was a very unique health entry. Oh, I said that one. All right, let's see here. I'd like to say in some form or fashion, I've been affected by a few of the things mentioned here. I say use the tools uh, it says you are equipped with to challenge them as needed or as they arise. You may not ever be fully rid of them, but at least you'll know how to deal with them as they come. And I think I mentioned that before. I don't know. Anyhow, hey, not a really great breakdown of the notes, but I've said a lot of the stuff already, right? How to deal with your stuff. You may not get over it, but now you know you have the tools to adapt to it. That's right. Okay, enough with the health. Let's move on to some advice. Try to see beyond the material world and develop your mental faculties. Open yourself up to deeper emotional contact and new experiences that can change you. Cultivate an interest in metaphysical subjects. That's right. Open yourself up to the, what do you call it? The astral, I suppose. Not just the earthbound. All right. Let's move on to your meditation. And this one is very simple. Heavenly bodies. That's right. Heavenly bodies. Very interesting. Now, there could be a lot loaded into that. They mention the, the, uh, the astral, your heavenly, and they mention the earth, the bodies. Now, I don't want to interpret your meditation. It is your birthday, but maybe that's something to think about. All right, and you know what? That just came to me. I hadn't thought about that earlier. I was kind of like, what could this one be for? Are they kind of a cop-out or what? Any event, let's move on to your strengths and your weaknesses. Your strengths, your sturdy, your sensuous, and your decisive. Your weaknesses, your phobic, repressed, and earthbound. They don't look at that one as a positive. Oh, do they? All right, hey. Let's move on to those born on this day so we can possibly get a little bit of a snapshot of maybe some pop, icon, pop culture icons that share your birthday. You may be surprised to find a few. And maybe we can append that personality type they're talking to and see what they are. Have a have a physical representation of as much. I think I'm never quite know what to say about this uh, example here. But in any event, let's dive in with those born on this day. We have Henry Ford, all right? He was the automotive inventor, the industrial innovator, and of the Ford Motor Company. And I think it's argued that he created the assembly line. We have Emily Bronte, who was a British novelist of Wuthering Heights, and she died at 30. And we're coming in strong, talking about heavenly bodies with Arnold Schwarzenegger, all right? The Austrian film actor and bodybuilder. We also have Daley Thompson, Thompson, or Thompson, British Olympic two-time gold medal winning decathlon champion. We also have Henry Moore, the British sculptor. Peter Bogdanovich, he was a film director of The Last Picture Show and Paper Moon. Paper Moon was a good one if you haven't seen it. Uh, Pat Schroeder, U.S. Congresswoman of Colorado. We also have Casey Stengal, a baseball player of 14 years and managed for 25 and managed the New York Yankees to 10 AL pennants, seven World Series titles. We also have Dan Sanborn, jazz fusion saxophonist, a flutist, TV host, of night music. We also have Thornstein Veblen, who's an economist. We have Buddy Guy, the blues guitarist and singer. Kate Bush, the singer-songwriter. Now I'm surprised to find that she's an earthbound one. She seemed like someone who has her head in the clouds. Maybe she's just highly involved. 
Hey man, moving on, we have Gordon J.F. McDonald, a geophysicist, and he is responsible for impacts of increasing carbon dioxide levels. We also have Gerald Moore, uh, who's a British pianist, perhaps the greatest accompanist, accompanist ever. Uh, he was a writer of Am I Too Loud? Question mark. We have Giorgio Vasari, who was an Italian art biographer, painter, architect. We have Michael M. Killian, who's an Irish film producer and a writer. We have Paul Anka, who was a singer. We have Northcott Parkinson, who was a British journalist, historian, and writer of Parkinson's Law. We also have Elnor M. Smeal, who was a social activist and women's rights worker. And we also have Bill Carthright, or Cartwright rather, of the Chicago Bulls basketball team. He was a center of three championship teams. All right, and that has been those born on this day. Your season is summer. Your sign once again is Leo of the Leo One period. And your quality and element once again is fixed fire. And that has been July 30th, the day of tangible present. Presents, rather, of The Secret Language of Birthdays book by Gary Goldschneider and Hugh Stelfer. So I have an affiliate link for this bad boy down in the description there if you need something to grace your coffee table. And if you buy through there, you'd be supporting the channel. You can do your shopping through there. That would do it, too. And I would appreciate it oh, greatly if you did. In any event, hey, once again, if it was your birthday today, I just want to say happy birthday. And for everyone else who just joined us out of curiosity, I hope you enjoyed yourself. And you join us for your birthday. Uh, once again, your daily numbers, you got to get into the metaphysical, baby. Let's see them jumping around here, if I can keep it in frame. A six and a three, four and nine. That's right. Okay, hey, this has been the die cast, birthday cast. I hope you enjoyed yourself once again. Take care of yourselves. Happy birthday. <laughs>